Over the years, films and directors are known for having an art style of sorts. Quentin Tarantino for his dark humour with heightened violence, Michael Bay for his over-the-top action, and Tim Burton for his overly dark-coloured gothic fantasy. And with that comes films that by using colour, cinematography or story, films have become very artistic. And with a lot of animated movies, this is heightened very well, depending on the world and characters that are animated inside it. So join me, The Average Critic, as I break down why Ratatouille is Pixar's most artistic movie. So, like in all movies, the plot is probably one of the most important pitch ideas. In fact, I would love to see Pixar pitching their ideas. Now, Ratatouille has an incredibly simple narrative. Unlike films like A Bug's Life, Finding Nemo and The Incredibles, Ratatouille isn't some big quest-like adventure where our characters have to travel far and wide to save the world. About 90% of Ratatouille's scenes take place in a kitchen. Despite this film being set in Paris, one of the most beautiful and romantic places ever, Pixar chooses to keep it compact to Gusto's restaurant. Again, on paper, this idea seems very boring. Even the plot is summarised by saying it's about a rat that dreams about being a cook. Compared to the likes of past Pixar films that have been about superheroes, fast cars and toys trying to get back home, Ratatouille tells a simple, perfect story. Because animated movies are marketed towards children, you could argue this film isn't much fun for them, and rather more for the adults. And while that is in a way true, that's not to say children won't enjoy this movie, because you'd be far from wrong. But the story is so compact, even the third and final act of this movie is very low key. It's just Remy's family cooking for the restaurant. I mean, that's the big conclusion. Cooking. Where's the lamb sauce? Come Compared to Toy Story with a chase sequence to the moving van, or A Bug's Life fighting the grasshoppers, or even The Incredibles saving the day. It's just Remy cooking a dish for Anton Ego, but it just works so well because you follow the motivations of all the characters. You understand why Remy wants to be there, you understand the stakes in what he has to do, you get to watch how he does it, and see how the payoff of his actions affect him and those around him. This idea of storytelling works so well for the film because it chooses quality over quantity. It doesn't try and throw loads of information at once at you, and rather makes it small so you can focus on the tiny details that make the film work so great. To use food as a metaphor, imagine you're getting served a fruit salad. You've got bananas, grapes, strawberries and peaches in it. You pick at the fruit you like and leave the ones you don't or the ones that have perhaps gone bad. A chef just hopes you like all the fruit, whereas Ratatouille is more like as if the chef has found the perfect way to grow the perfect apple, to make sure it tastes delicious to everyone. He focuses all his time on making sure that that apple is perfect. Let's move on to the music. The music in Ratatouille is one of the most unique soundtracks of all of Pixar. When researching for this review and finding out the music was done by Michael Giacchino, I am probably butchering that name, I apologise so much, I realised this guy has scored some of my favourite movie music, and his score for Ratatouille is just perfect. You could almost listen to the music and instantly understand the style, messages and understanding this movie brings. Now obviously Pixar is an American company and I have no doubt it would have produced a good score by any composer, but you can tell the score had to reflect the style and tone of the movie. Its soundtrack sounds like something straight out of an artsy French movie. French movies are known for being very artistic in style, and Ratatouille follows the same formula, especially with its music. As it didn't just create a great score, it created a unique French feel that allows you to immerse yourself in every scene. It even has the song Le Festin, sung by Camille, I hope I'm getting that name right, which, unless you can speak French, you won't understand the lyrics. And even if you can't understand it, it doesn't stop you from enjoying it. Also, if you translate the lyrics to English, this song is written brilliantly and it talks about Remy's dream of being a chef, using words like sweet and wine and plate. You can find an English version on YouTube, and listening to it is absolutely gorgeous. It was such a perfect choice for having the song sung in French. They didn't need to, but it's perfect that they did, and it just adds to the style of the film, being a little nod to French cinema. It works both ways, and doesn't undermine the film in any way. Also, I have this film on DVD, but I chose to watch this film on Disney+, and was surprised and a little bit disappointed to find that the writing on the screen for the newspapers and the letter explaining that Linguini is Gusto's son is all written in English, whereas my European DVD, it's all written in French. I wonder who that is for. Poppycock! Pushy Americans, always showing up late for every war. 
overpaid, oversexed, and over here. No disrespect to my American cousins. I love you. I don't know which one Pixar chooses as their definitive version, but considering the way they choose to show the music, I'm going to bet my way that it's the French version. Once again, that's what I love about it. We don't need to see what the writing says. We know that when Skinner is reading the newspaper, it's not about what's in the newspaper. It's about his reaction as a character. More than adding my point about this film going over style than practicality, it makes more sense for the words to be written in French. Just by choosing this style of music makes the film feel fresh and original and definitely allows you to remember this film even more. For me, a good soundtrack isn't just what adds to a good movie, but allows you to remember it and makes it more rewatchable. Take Frozen for example. It's a great movie, but when it came out, the music was goddamn everywhere. And these days, people don't rewatch that movie because they got so sick and tired of the soundtrack. Having a good enough soundtrack really stops a film from being forgotten. So a huge reason this film stands out to me is the art style, and I reckon you're thinking this film isn't much different in style compared to other animated movies, but let me tell you why you're wrong. Now Pixar have a track record of not generally doing films that have humans in it. They've done a few where they are the main characters, and they have done some background humans, but they aren't used to animating human beings. But with any animation film that does focus on human characters, you can always see the animation is heightened to a little bit of an unrealistic way. Characters are freakish in size, odd proportions in head features, and animation films like this are always interesting to watch because the method of animation is what gives the film its individual style. Skinner is freakishly small, Linguini and the rest of the chefs have large noses, eyes, or a forehead, and Anton Ego is probably one of the most uniquely animated characters ever. <laughs> You're slow for someone in the fast lane. And you're thin for someone who likes food. <laughs> this animated art style is so out of nowhere compared to Pixar's other human characters. The only ones that have come close to this is The Incredibles, but that film has superheroes in it. They're gonna kind of be a little bit odd. Given that Pixar chose to go for a unique style of animation shows that they were interested in not just making a good movie with a unique story and characters, but a film that would be enjoyable to look at from a visual perspective, which seems necessary considering the film is mainly about chefs in a kitchen. This again links back to classic French films. If you've ever watched a French animation film, you know how much French films have a kind of unique style. Ratatouille's artistry isn't just from the music and the animation, but with any good story, it's nothing without good story story and characters. Once again, this film is so deliciously simple. Everything sort of has a meaning and the amounts of messages in this film are staggering. I really do have to give props to the script to this film because the dialogue is just fantastic. Two minutes into the movie, hearing about Remy's thoughts on humans is such a small line, but it's just such a thoughtful quote. I know I'm supposed to hate humans, but there's something about them. They, they don't just survive, they discover, they create. I mean, just look at what they do with food. This is a great line because these days there is a large group of people, myself included, they have kind of a small and humorous disgust towards the human race. There's too many people on this earth. We need a new plague. Remy kind of reminds ourselves that even though we have our faults, we've done some incredible things. And of course, how can you forget Gusteau's words at the start? Anyone can cook, but only the fearless can be great. I mean, it just sets up the film perfectly. Watching Remy's reaction and understanding his character is so crucial and from the moment the film starts, he's a hero to root for because his beliefs are so true and his problems are to overcome are sympathetic. I mean, the conversation he has with his dad is written like poetry. You can understand where Remy's dad comes from and you even recognise it as in our world, we very much treat rats as pests. This is what makes this film work so well. If Remy was a dog, it would still be entertaining, but it's not as interesting. Because he's a rat, it works so much better. The juxtaposition of him being a rat and wanting to be a chef is incredibly imaginative, making this film incredibly clever in terms of its idea. Now, most moviegoers will tell you that there's nothing wrong with having messages in your films. We just don't like it being forced down our throat. But Ratatouille's strong messages, despite being a lot of them, are just so innocent and pure and comes across more naturally within the contents of the story. 
but everything feels earned. You understand why Remy wants to become a chef, you understand his dad's lack of faith, and you even understand Colette's motivations for being a chef. It all wraps up in the end with Anton Ego's review. I'm gonna come out and say that whoever wrote this scene is one of the best artists of our time. Ego's review is just spoken beautifully by Peter O'Toole and sums up the whole meaning of the movie, which is the discovery of not being able to just survive, but to thrive in the world we live in. Remy chooses to evolve and move forward. He puts his faith in Linguini to help him become great and not be brought down by his dream because of where he comes from. Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. This is such a universal lesson. As soon as we are put on this earth, we are destined to find something to do with our lives, whether that's career or family. We doubt ourselves because as Anton says, the world is often unkind to new talent, new creation, and the new needs friends. I feel everyone on this earth has had this feeling in some way or another, and I believe Ratatouille allows us to view our humanity from a different perspective. <laughs> perspective. That's it. I'd like some fresh, clear, well-seasoned perspective. Can you suggest a good wine to go with that? The artistry of this film and its messages is so universal, and I can't think of any reason why anyone wouldn't enjoy this film, which is definitely a test to Pixar's fantastic script and story. As like I said, on paper, a story about a rat who wants to cook kind of sounds boring, but in reality, it's nothing more than one of the greatest films ever created. The only gripe I have, and I am digging incredibly deep here, is Linguini's character can be a little bit weird and annoying, but that's kind of his character, and he is still highly entertaining. So with that, it gets my professional rating of 9 out of 10. And I love this movie too much to give it my personal rating of 10 out of 10. I know there are people who probably haven't watched this film, but please do. It's just perfect. Rewatching this movie also gave me a spark to try making ratatouille, as me and my wife are trying to eat a little bit healthier. I was able to follow an easy recipe for one of my favorite YouTubers, Binging with Babish, and if you guys are looking for a delicious vegetarian option to add to your diet, it's incredibly easy. You just chop up vegetables, you can prepare it the night before, and if you're not used to the kitchen, I would highly recommend it. Check out his video, I'll leave it in the description below. I'm a massive, massive fan of his page. It's awesome. It's got loads of flavor, and if you're like me and you enjoy your meat, you can easily serve this with fish or chicken. And when your wife is done gawping at the camera... You can sit down, eat ratatouille while watching ratatouille. Mine didn't come out exactly like the film, but it was kind of delicious nonetheless. So thank you for joining me in this video. This was so much fun to do. Let me know in the comment section down below what's your favorite Ratatouille moment. And tune in next week when we're going to be talking about my favorite Pixar movie ever, Wally. -E. I love that film. I can't wait to talk about that next week, so please tune in for that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, and as always, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. And as always, I will catch you in the next one.